know if I can hold this because I'm going to read some notes that I made. So I'm a writer uh, in the in the when I don't do my day job. In the rest of my life, I write. So this morning, I offered to Awana that I wanted to share some of my experience. I'm pretty new in Sahaj. I've only been in it since November 2015, so it would be about six months today. And um, I just offered to share some really, a couple of really cool stories that are short and quick, but I just know whenever you are interested in something or you're starting something, a lot of times you kind of want to know what is it about, who's, who, who can I ask who's had some experiences, and you want it to be authentic and genuine. You don't want to think that someone's just standing up and saying, well, this is just great, it's wonderful. We so, don't do that. Right, right. <laughs> and, and so, um, as she said, I, uh, uh, my name is Rain. I sat this morning and thought, uh, what things would I like to touch on to say that I can share with uh, everyone, especially new people that have never been to Sahaj before, or even just for people here to just share our own stories. And one of, the, one of the things I wanted to say, oh, thank you, Iwana, and all my Savage family. I love you guys dearly. Um, you've, made a, you've made a huge impact in my life in six months. Um, I wanted to write things down because I didn't want to forget the things that were really important to me that really have been profound in my life. Um, my initial attraction to Sahaj was introduced through a, a wonderful lady named Jeanette, who unfortunately couldn't be here today because she had a, a family commitment uh, already prior to the date of this. And I happened to meet her at Goodness Me, which is a health food store like Whole Foods. And I was talking to a store employee, and somehow she kind of entered the conversation. We got talking about health and healing. I found out that she had survived cancer and then she had another bout and she was in the midst of surviving that too and she's mentioned about Sahaj meditation because somehow I must have come up with yeah stress and life and like oh yeah divorce kids you know oh I need to meditate you know and I was like I used to teach fitness I used to do sort of yoga classes back in the day but it wasn't what is offered today but I never knew until I came to Sahaj um, that yoga meant Union. I always thought yoga was associated with exercise as an ex-fitness instructor. So the first thing that I learned was that yoga meant union, and Sahaj, like Iwana said, meant born with. The, two, the word breaks down into born with. We're born with the ability to make this union. So when Jeanette mentioned this to me, of course life goes on. I was busy. I was at a really stressful job. And I thought, yeah, yeah, I can't come to the Wednesday class. I work Wednesday evenings. So a couple more months went by, and it was in the back of my head, and I met her again at the store. And she's like, yeah, you should come out to the classes. I'm like, I work Wednesday night. I'd love to. And she mentioned that it was free, and I was like, yes, I'm a single mom. I'm on a budget. This is great. <clears throat> and then she said, you know what? There's a class on Friday in Oakville. And that's where it started. I went to my first class in, the, um, in November in Oakville, and um, I just want to remember all the things that I had said. My first class absolutely was the most amazing, peaceful connection I had ever had. And I had done meditation before as, like I said, as a fitness instructor when I had my kids and I was a stay-at-home mom. I used to, you know, lie on the ground and do gold light and all this, you know, <coughs> try, tried every kind of meditation, but it always seemed kind of forced and effort and kind of had to, you know, focus on, okay, what am I doing now? What am I doing next? And when I came to this class, it was just so peaceful. And not only did I experience the peace individually inside myself, but it had been the first time I'd ever done a meditation collectively with everybody in the room. And it was magical. It was nothing like I'd ever felt before. And um, it made me think of, and this is why I wrote this down, because I knew I wouldn't remember all this stuff. I don't have a great memory, so. Um, I love that quote that Maya Angela said, people will always forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but they will never forget how you made them feel. And that day, the way I felt changed my life. And and yeah, it, it changed my life 
in a way that I couldn't imagine. And it was small, and it was simple, it was effortless, and it just slowly grew. And I just want to read and make sure I didn't miss anything. I felt like in my life, because of my job and the stress, I kind of knew I was on the edge of uh, <coughs> work in the dental field. I hated administration. I did it because I had to, because I had four kids. I had an ex who maybe paid, maybe wouldn't. And I made a lot of choices just out of really survival. So when I got to this place and I started thinking, I don't know if I want to do this for the rest of my life. You know, maybe I'll live another 50 years. That's a long time to do something you don't like. And um, the, when I met Jeanette, um, and then when I came to the class that night, it made me think of when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And that night I felt like Sri Mataji was my teacher for the next chapter of my life. And, thanks. and I, I, I wrote down, Gandhi said, um, I know the secret of silence. And he mentioned to us to prepare our minds for the great voice of silence. And what he quoted was, the divine radio is always singing if we could only make ourselves ready to listen to it. And that is what Sri Mataji did that night when it came to her, and I can't remember the exact story, but she had sat on the beach, and it came to her a way to create a meditation where everybody could tune in to the Divine Radio Station. <coughs> and the two stories that I have, just quick to share, that since I've been in Sahaj, my father, my stepfather, um, a couple of months back, had to go for a routine surgery for some aneurysms on his leg. He had, had one on the other leg a few years before. Everything was great, everything went fine. He went in for this one, of course, they tell you all that happy stuff. You could die, you could have a heart attack. <laughs> and you know, it was like, okay, no problem. So he finally got back, did it. And um, the next day, he wasn't feeling that great. He was nauseous. They said, you know, something doesn't seem right. He sailed through the other one. And sure enough, the following day, he had had a heart attack. And all the doctors got together and were deciding to do a triple bypass emergency. So within one week, he had another major surgery. And I did mention, and I reached out to the Sahaj family, um, what I think in this story was the most comfort for me was for the first time in my life, I had something that I could do, not only for myself, but with my mother and for my father to comfort us, to give us something um, to raise our vibration, to help raise energy, to heal him, and like we talked about the bandan, to protect ourselves, to protect him, and then just reaching out into the community. And make sure I don't miss anything. Um, it really reduced the stress, not only for me, because it was the first time in my life when I felt like, at one point I broke down, and it wasn't because I was sad and thought something bad's gonna happen. <coughs> I, I'm in Sahaj now, I'm like, this something, always a blessing will come out. But I was sad because I really realized how much I loved this man who came into my life eight years ago. And it made me come to terms with how precious everyone's life is and that just in one moment, everything can change. We didn't know for sure if he was gonna be here or not. In the end, we said, whatever is for the highest good for my stepdad, <coughs> for everybody involved in the situation, for the world, that's what we wanted. And of course, selfishly, my ego was like, but you really want him to live. You know, it's like, you really want, you do want him to live, you know. And so having Sahaj, I mean, I lit the candle, I had the picture, um, I put my dance picture there, and it really calmed my mom and me down. And we really got through it, because it was a very tough time not knowing if he really was gonna make it. He had some other complications, he had clots in the lung, they thought it was anxiety, misdiagnosed him, and he was literally sliding down the wall and somehow two nurses out of nowhere came and he was really just dying. He was not able to breathe and he was saying, God, I'm okay to go. I've lived a good life. If this is it, then I'm okay. I'm at peace and if it's not, please get me help. And you know, from nowhere, two nurses happened to come along just at that moment, I got him on oxygen and everything, you know, in the end he came out with flying colors. I mean, he went through an extremely challenging time, but he came out with flying colors and that was the first uh, 
experience that really showed me the power of Sahaj and being able to internalize it and being able to share it with my family so that all of us could take our stress level down. And we really had something to do that was collective and that was really raising the vibration and always being in that positive place. The second story that happened was um, a month ago, I lost my job and it was a real <coughs> shock. I wasn't expecting it, I had no idea. And initially, of course, the first, the first couple of hours, you know, I sat in the car, I was like, what? Huh? <laughs> I was like, oh, let me think about this one. And I had the mixed emotions. I kind of felt grief, I was a bit sad. I kind of felt, took it personal. I was like, wow, how could this happen? And then I just remembered, oh, I can do my band down. I can go home and meditate. And for everyone else who knows about the foot soaks and, you know, be, be able to use the salt water and to absorb that magnesium and just do something for myself, all the tools I learned in the different workshops I've attended to really take care of me. Because it was a, a really devastating shock. I'm a single mom. I have two of my daughters still living with me. I thought, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? How am I going to? I'm like, it's OK. I got traumatic on my side. <laughs> so I did. I meditated. I did the foot soaks. I knew that somehow I would be OK. And because of Sahaj, and there's the um, chart over there, the subtle systems, the left and the right. I understood the left. If I'm sad, I'm going in the past. I don't need to be in the past. If I'm worrying about, oh my god, how am I going to pay the bills? I'm going into the future. The beauty of what Sahaj told me was, go back to the center. Everything is going to be okay. Just stay in this moment, right now, right here, and you're going to be okay, and just trust the universe. And that's what the beauty of Sahaj is, that you actually have these tools and this knowledge to really bring yourself back to the center. Because I know we've all lost it in the world. We've all been taught to be fearful, to be negative, to judge, to um, belittle ourselves, or feel like we have to contract. And Sahaj is the opposite. It's like, you're big, expand, open, be in the center. And it really nourished me with the seeds from the very beginning so that I could have all these tools and not have to stress out. And I remember coming to class going, I lost my job, isn't that awesome? I was like, wow, this is great, because I'm OK. Everything's going to be all right. And I won't lie, a couple of times I did kind of dip a little, but then I just was like, oh, yeah, OK, you're good. Meditate. One night, I remember having, I had had my heart racing a bit. I have thyroid, so I do, sometimes it's like, well, I know I'm not mentally stressing. I'm an optimistic person. Why is my heart beating? And sometimes it can be, if you have a, a dis-ease, it <coughs> can be that problem. And I knew that stress could have been aggravating it. So I wasn't, I was like, am I stressing? Or is it the thyroid? It didn't matter. Either way, what Sahaj taught me was it always comes back to me. Whatever the thoughts are, I can always go back into the center and ask for that self-realization and remember that I am the true spirit, we all are, and that I am the master, I am the guru of my own life, and everything I need is within me, like the Wizard of Oz. Everything I've ever needed is within me. Every answer I've ever needed is from within, which is from the divine connection to the universe. And The things I guess the Hajj meditation helped me with in those two stories were to face my fears and to have tools to cope with it, uh, to reduce my anxiety, literally, to let go of my unconscious past, which I learned the, the subtle system of the past, to not worry about the future, to raise my own personal healing energy, and most important and profoundly was to realize that I am my own master, and that really stuck with me. And in the middle of the night when I really was having a tough time and I was at my mom's and my heart's racing and I was like, oh gosh, I really got to get control. The most beautiful thing was I reached out to one of the Sahaj Yogi friends of mine and fortunately they happened to be awake and synchronicity of the universe and they reminded me, ground yourself, here's how you do it, here's a couple of powerful I am affirmations you can say, remember you are a yogi now in this um, meditative group and you have that power within and that's what I did it was exactly what I needed and I went and meditated and I think it was like three in the morning and I just I had peace and one of the things I wanted to end with was that Sri Mataji said when you are the spirit you are like a brilliant diamond which is giving light by itself <coughs> so 
What I want to wish for everyone here today is for you to experience that light and then continue to shine like the bright diamonds that you are. And Dalai Lama said, we can never obtain peace in the outer world until we obtain peace within ourselves. So when we have peace in here, and all we have to do, each one of us, just have peace in here, and then the world is changed, not by us forcing it on someone else, not by us trying to control it, but just by changing ourselves, just by finding our own peace and going within and having our own divine connection, that's how the world is transformed, by each of us doing that. So thank you for allowing me to share my story. that she came on Wednesday because I said, you know, guys, I want you so much to come on Wednesdays. Now I can't. I lost my job. <laughs> so that was not very positive now. And now you have a job. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so thank you so, so much. And